Hi, this is Dave Stahl, Vintage Apple Tech, and today um, I'm going to show you how to uh, do a repair on the inner bezel on your iMac. Um, as you know, these iMac G3s, as they age, as if it's any plastic, in years it gets more brittle in time. Um, and uh, it's just an issue and like with these inner bezels they get very brittle and they get cracked very easy like if you were to ship it if it gets dropped or bumped really hard it can crack and what happens is the uh, studs on the inside of these that hold the CRT against it uh, that's usually what breaks first but um, I've gotten a few of these machines in the past and some of them, the bezel are just, or bezels are just broken into a million pieces. So uh, I've tried to identify what the plastic is made from. There's lots of different things. I have some friends that, that used to work for Apple way back in the day and they really even weren't sure because Apple was kind of tight-lipped about it, you know, the, being Apple. Um, because they experimented with a lot of different plastics to come up with the translucence and stuff like that. So near as I can tell by just going on some forms is this is could be a uh, what they call a uh, polyvinyl chloride or a U polyvinyl chloride plastic um, because you can you can scratch it with your fingernail although it's harder than the shell that's on the outer surface of it, the translucent one. Um, this, and I do some different chemical things. I know like when you heat it, because I've, I, I've had to repair this uh, bezel on it, uh, it stinks to high heaven. So you want to do this outside or in a very well ventilated area and you want to make sure you're wearing a respirator and some goggles because you don't want to get the fumes in your eyes because it will burn. And so that kind of some of the tall tale characteristics of that material, but I'm not sure if somebody out there knows for sure what these inner bezels are made out of, because um, it, it kind of looks almost like kind of like an older ABS plastic type of stuff. Um, uh, certainly, uh, give me your response to it. I appreciate it. So anyway, I come up, try to come up with different ways of fixing these things. There's some people that. Uh, just for, for quick cosmetic things, they'll use like hot glue and stuff and it holds it together and then you put the outer uh, trim bezel on it, the, the part that's got all the, you know, the, the pretty part on it, and it hides it. And it looks a lot better than a gaping hole, but I needed to some, get something that actually gave it structural support. Uh, I've tried using epoxy uh, glues, I've tried different ones, they don't work. They get brittle. Uh, I mean, they, they don't get brittle, but they just don't bite into that material. So what I did is I I am molding it together chemically by using uh, straight acetone here, 100% acetone. Now this is just my method. By no means is, am I recommending this to anybody, but it's what's worked for me. When you do it, you know you got to be very, very careful. You don't want to get that stuff you know on your skin you use gloves um, although I'm not going to have a glove on because I'm going to be at the end of a q-tip but that's and I by doing my safety glasses on so anyway um, as you look at this it looks really bad but actually I've repaired it uh, before this this bezel was just busted everywhere I mean it had cracks all over the place and uh, I mean this was all busted up here um, down here where the speakers are sorry um, it was just it was just all busted up down through here and uh, right there you can see and then all along the side here and then um, up here right there I got it by the window here because that way you can see it a lot better in the light if you're if you're just looking at it at normal light it doesn't look bad but I mean if you get real close to it then you can see the repairs that's been done on it but anyway uh, and then after you do that this stuff this material, this sand very easily. Um, I uh, refurbish cases on like old, uh, the old uh, 68K Max, like the, uh, you know, the SE, Mac SE, the original iMac, uh, Macintosh 128K. Those cases are easy to work on and I can make them look like brand new. 
Um, and same way with like the uh, Macintosh Color, Color Classic, same thing. I've done several cases of those. Uh, the iBook, some of the older iBook cases, easy to do. You can make them look like brand new. You just got to spend the time doing it. But anyway, so uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see this. And I'm going to zoom in on this one because um, you'll be able to see it getting like real gooey on it here. Okay. Um, but before I do that, because uh, I got, you know, this, ideally it, you should do this when it's all disassembled, not assembled. But anyway, I'm going to get some blue tape here. And I'm just going to kind of keep it off. The, this is regular painter's tape. And this stuff is uh, pretty, pretty harmless on a lot of stuff. But it, it'll keep the, the stuff off of it because I don't want to drip on the screen, even though it probably won't hurt it, but still. So, anyway, um, we're going to get some acetone going here. Right? And so, what you're going to do, and like I said, you should have gloves on, but I'm not wearing mine. You're just going to kind of go, and you're just going to kind of, you'll feel it get real gooey. And that because it's melting the plastic, and then when it hardens up, it's it's you know thermally, chemically, thermally melted back together again, and that will work better than any freaking glue you can buy that I've tried anyway. And I work in the optical industry. I used to own an optical lab many years ago, and we used to do a lot of frame repairs and stuff. And uh, uh, Xyle materials is a fantastic material to work on. Some of this newer stuff that they make these frames out of, um, you can't manipulate it. it. You can't even heat them up to adjust them anymore, and I don't like them. Um, so whenever I can get an old Xyle frame, I'm happy as a clam on that. So anyway, you're just gonna, it takes time, and you can see the, you can see the, uh, see that's, that's the plastic, and you're just gonna go, and, don't, and like I said, I, I'm not afraid to do this. I mean, I kind of jump in and do things. Like I'm, I'm a computer tech, I've worked on, Computers. I specialize in Macs because I like them. Um, so anyway, we're just going to go like this, and it doesn't take very long for it to cure out. And like I said, if you see the crack, just keep just gluing it in there, and it'll it'll fill in. And then uh, so right there, and then so that's it. Doesn't take long. About four or five minutes. It'll be hard as rock again. Uh, it, it you know goes back to its state. And I'm going to do another little spot here too. And I'm going to go right over here and get this one too. And it's kind of nice that it picks up the plastic because you can actually use the plastic and just kind of glue it glue it back in there. And uh, do this again here. And no guys, I have not got that uh, modified G4 board back yet. Dust dude's been very busy and he, I asked him the other day and he uh, said that uh, as soon as he gets time, he will work on it and then get it back to me. Because I'm so eager to get Leopard on this thing. This is all ready to run Leopard. I just need the board back. And, and we will do an actual live boot. When I get it all back together, we'll boot it up in Tiger first and then we'll uh, go back to the option key, pull up all the, the you know, the 9.2, the Tiger, and the Leopard, and we're going to try to boot in the Leopard. And it should do it natively. Our fingers crossed, anyway. And, uh, yeah, so I'm going to just kind of go back over. And, um, nice thing about doing this is when the cover's on, you can't see these repairs anyway, because it, you know, it's the same color, it blends in. And uh, yeah, and there's a crack that was over here that I repaired. I might just hit that again since we already got this stuff out. There's a long ray over here. Do not get it on the uh, ruby red cover. I haven't tested this. I got old. I got a lot of old. I might, a lot of old uh, Mac parts and stuff. So when, usually when I test things, I'll use one of those as a guinea pig. So yeah, so we're going to let it set just for a couple minutes here 
and uh, see it's already it's already dry to the touch there. So I'm going to firm up just a little bit longer here, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to use some um, a sanding block on it. Um, this is a fine it's a 220 grit, and that's a it's a 3M sanding block here. You can use it on metal, wood, plastic. But the nice thing about it is it conforms to whatever the surface you have rather than just using a piece of wood and doing it. It just depends on what you're doing. I, I like using these because if you're trying to find, follow the contour, it's a much better thing to do. So yeah, so let's see here. So yes, it's I mean, you know, acetone, you can use that for a lot of stuff. Over the years, I've used it when I used to work on copiers and stuff back in the day. Um, you can use it on all kinds of stuff. I had guys in car shows, that's how they get spots off of carpeting. Use acetone on it, works pretty good. Just, just got to be careful with it because, like I said, it, it can wreck a lot of stuff too. And like I said, I'm not doing this to the point where it looks brand new. I'm just doing it to where you don't have these gigantic cracks in it anymore and it, it adds structural strength so it's it's you know it's all molded back together um, if you take it apart um, it, pro it should hold together but you know it's like everything else it could always come apart so anyway um, I'm just gonna kind of lower it here yeah we're dry so I'm just gonna very lightly just go over this and all I'm doing is just knocking down the the rough spots and I'm not pushing putting very much pressure on it at all just very lightly and yeah it's gonna look ugly before it looks better uh, we could always polish it up with uh, some McGuire's that's what I use to polish up a lot of covers that McGuire's uh, plastic polish and stuff works fantastic let's see how it's it's um, see that's dull because that's where I sanded it but if I go over it with some real fine uh, paper uh, like uh, thousand grit it'll polish it up but like if I use that in the wires it'll put the shine back on it but I want to just a little bit more and the thing is is uh, don't be in a hurry it takes time to do this and I'm, like I said I'm not going to worry about getting all this stuff out here I'm just I'm just putting it up a little bit Again, I'm going to do this one here just a little bit and that's why I put the 3M here I don't want to get any scratch the screen or you'll that'll make you have a bad day real quick I might just let this one sit just a little bit longer it's a little tackier for whatever the reason it just takes a minute but yeah but let me um, I'm going to show you something else here so I'm going to so, pause um, the video I got my McGuire's here um and uh let's zoom out here and this stuff where it works this is like what you use on headlights but this stuff works really good on plant on polishing up uh, computer cases so like if it's an acrylic case like i had um my uh, let me think here my late 2006 uh, 20 inch imac uh, it was the white one outside was acrylic um it did a really good job of taking the scratches now it, it took about uh, a day to do it but it, it it'll take them out if they're not real bad and if they are real deep then you can use a little bit more of aggressive plastic polish but it's like everything else it takes time you have to kind of experiment with it so anyway i'm gonna zoom in here and i'm just gonna go over this here and what this is this is gonna start putting the shine back on it and take that really dull stuff off and uh, we're not getting too much yellow stuff off of this takes the yellowing off of uh, plastic cases too so like off these G, uh, G3 machines this works really good on the color cases uh, I clean them up and like I said if you take your time uh, you can get a lot of light scratches off of them make it look very nice again and then um, their thing is you can um, use it like on the base the base cover too on the bottom those things get really yellowed the, the whiter acrylic but you can see already the difference that makes already it's a lot shinier not so dull looking 
Now, like I said, this little rut really looks a lot better, bad than what it really looks like, okay? I can feel it here a little bit. And I mean, if I really wanted to get this to the point where I wanted to get this out of here, what I would do is I would take a donor bezel and take the acetone, melt it, mold it in here, make it like it bumped up and then take and finish it all out again and make it feather it all out. Just like if you're working on fiberglass and make it all nice and shiny. But like I said, I'm not worried about it right now. Uh, I don't plan on selling this machine. It's just for my, I'm just firming it up for uh, structural purposes because once they start cracking, uh, you move them and stuff, it only gets worse. So what you do is you kind of head it off to the pass there, so to speak. And uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's a labor of love. It takes time. You're not going to do it in a couple minutes, all right? And uh, like when I polish out those uh, older mat cases, yeah, it takes time. Uh, it usually takes me a couple days to totally refurbish a case, and it looks brand new. I get all that yellowing off. A lot of that yellowing is caused by the injection mold process, the chemicals that they use to keep the basically the plastic from catching on fire because it's extruded at such a high heat. And uh, that stuff leaches out in time and it reacts to the environment. Um, uh, ultraviolet definitely affects it and you get ultraviolet from many, many sources. Just about everything emits a, a certain type of ultraviolet frequency. Um, but uh, that's how you do that. So I'm just gonna put a little, little McGuire's on that one there. And uh, we'll make that look a little nicer here and uh, like I said don't be afraid to just kind of go over here and uh, takes time that's right cat here my my uh, beautiful kitty over here her name's Manny, Manny Cat, and uh, she kind of adopted us, the place we used to live at. We, she was outside and she befriended us, so we kept her, and uh, she was injured, but she's a beautiful kitty. She's a calico, and uh, we foster dogs and cats. We've done that for many years. We've got four kittens right now we're taking care of right now. We're bottle feeding them. This is a little off topic, sorry guys, but anyway. But yeah, see, it's it's already starting to make it look a little better there. And like I said, it's, um, if you take, and you get in the light, you know, just certain ways here, see it? You know, it looks, it looks a lot better, yeah, you can see the repair. But, you know, it's, like I said, if I wanted to make this look like brand new again, then it would take me, on this cover, it would probably take me two or three days to, to make it look like new, all the repair and stuff. And like on the inside of the case where you have the, the three screws, or excuse me, four screws that hold the corners that holds the CRT, that's where they're really prone to break. I've, every time I get one, they're always busted off. And I do that method to reattach those, and it works pretty darn good. So anyway, um, that's my little quick tip for you. If anybody knows exactly what the material is, uh, then that will help me out because then, then I can use different things on it. But this is just the, some of the stuff that I that I've used over the years to do it there. And uh, so yeah, so hope that this was uh, useful to you. And uh, again, this is uh, Dave Stahl with Vintage Apple Tech, and you guys have a fantastic uh, week and a weekend. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.